Another nasty Ooh. one. What's the score now? 5-2. Sorry to remind you, mate. <laughs> that was not the plan. No. <laughs> well, I don't think it was. <laughs> <laughs> All in hand, sir. <laughs> well, you should have a bit of a run here, Ben. No pressure, mate. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of mine, like the nine ball. Yeah. Must be the yellow. Must be the yellow ball. Back to the snooker, really. <laughs> Is that what you're playing yeah. for? I should have practiced my jump shots, you know. So let's talk about this then. So yeah. have you practiced jump shots? Have you actually not taken one yet? No. Do I have a go now? No, not really. Okay then. <laughs> there's, there's windows over there. And anything can happen. I think yeah. it's uh, it's something that for me, I, I don't have enough time to to Get try good. it at yeah. all. Um, yeah. And it's something I'm probably just better off leaving for now, unless I've got weeks. I think to to really try and master it. To be honest, anything anything could happen if I try to. Uh, a jump shot, so it's probably best to just stick to the old swerve, maybe. Oh. That counts, oh, doesn't there it? There you go. Look. Oh, another ball gone. So you're talking about equipment then. Um, so for your snooker cue then, is it one that you've had forever? Do you change your cue? Is it a particular one that you've... Snooker cue-wise, um, I've had a few cues over the years, um, and the one I've had now is... I think I got the, the 2018 or 2019, I think it was, I got that queue. Um, so it was kind of before I won all my big events, so I've had that queue since then. Um, there was a couple of queue changes before that, but yeah, I think compared to other people, I, I, I changed quite a lot. Because okay. I know other players that have sort of had their queue their whole lives and stuff like that, yeah. whereas I'm able to sort of change my queue if I want to, or I don't really have that much problem doing so. Um, and it only takes me sort of a, a week or two to really get used to it. So yeah. I'm, I'm quite lucky in that respect. But yeah, every, every, every few years I normally like to change it. Have you got a particular chap that makes them for you? Yeah. Uh, John, John Paris over the past couple of years seems to make all, all the, the, the top yeah. players that their cues and he, he's always been good to me. So um, it's a cue that I'm very happy with at the moment and, and doing well with. So, do you, so what's the process then? Do you go to him and say, right, this is what I'm after. This is the feel I want or the look I want or the weight I want or... He, he's kind of, he kind of took the uh, specs of one of my old cues and, and it's always quite similar. So it's not, no cue is exactly the same. It's impossible to find something exactly the same, yeah. but most of them are kind of the same look, the same, the same kind of feel. And that way I'm able to adjust sort of quite quickly normally. Do you find that a change of tip makes quite a difference? Yeah, t t changing a tip for me takes quite long, really. It probably takes a couple of weeks to really feel at home on the, really? on the tournament tables. Yeah, I think playing in practice is never a challenge, but just the reaction on the tournament cloth is so so different, and it takes a little while to get used to, and it takes a, at least a good few games to get to really feel comfortable and at home with it. How long do you usually have a tip on for? Uh, I'd say a tip normally lasts me quite long, about about a season, yeah. even more, yeah, 18 months, yeah. So I know a lot of people that take them off, sort of go through, I think Ronnie goes through a few of the tournament yeah. sometimes, but I'm, so if I get one, I, I'm not someone that ever moans or takes it off, I just stick it on and, and just play through it, yeah. yeah, play through the pain. Do you, do you change it yourself? No, it's, it's uh, the last tip I had put on was actually by referee and tournament director Paul Collier. Um, now I've moved back to Bristol. John Paris is based in London. It's a bit of a trek for me to go there and, and Paul was nice enough to offer to do me one and he put on a good one for me. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you find that chalk makes a difference? Do you use a certain, certain I've, I've chalk? Always, I've always used the same chalk from when I was a kid, the triangle chalk. Yeah. It's always been fine by me. Yeah. And Ben, ben still, still uses it. Still I don't, using the same thing? There's been quite a lot of, I do, yeah. there's been some technological changes, don't there, in terms of chalks yeah, and, and I quite know a few new ones have come on the market that are supposed to grip more and drop less. There's other brands that have come in on it, and I tried a, a couple of them, but to be honest, I don't, I don't see any, anything wrong with 
Yeah. It's, it's done me no harm in the past yeah. three seasons, yeah. it? so it's, it's definitely not the chalk that's yeah. not winning your tournaments, no. it's, it's the player. So you do find that you sort of fiddle about with equipment, well, that doesn't, I'm getting the feeling that that's not a massive concern of yours to be no. continually changing and looking for better, you just kind of get what you're happy with and... Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of just a person that my cue action's always been the same. I try and keep the cue the same, and unless something goes wrong or bends a little bit with the travelling. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not someone that would change anything unless I really have to. Um, and I, I just find that it's more more mental. If you're if you're trying to think that a chalk's going to help you win a tournament, then mentally, in, yeah. in my head, you're a bit weaker than me, yeah. and, and that's something that I'll, I'll feed off in. If you're chopping and changing your cue or, or trying to distribute the weight different or anything like that, it's, it's just something that I notice discreetly and in the back of my head I, I use it, try and use it to my advantage. Yeah. I was going to say, should we call this the deciding rack? <laughs> Smash two uh, in. If, if I'm straight on the nine ball, this is the, this is the last one I reckon. <laughs> So in terms of playing nine ball, then have you actually have you found it good fun? Have you found it a good sort of change? Is it broken things up for I you? I think for me at the moment is I'm in the fun stage. Yeah. But if I got to a standard where I thought maybe I'd have the chance to win tournaments, it, it completely changes. I think in when you start putting that pressure on yourself and thinking, oh, I could I could win this event or and stuff like that, then you kind of lose the fun side of it and it becomes a bit of a chore, a bit of a job. So yeah. Everything at the moment is new to me. I'm just excited to be here practicing yeah. here. And, and obviously, you, it's nice of you to let me practice down here. And it's just exciting for me at the moment to, to have that new challenge, go to America, play pool. If I lose, I lose. No one expects me to, to, to do anything. And um, I've had no practice or anything like that. I can't even pot a ball off the break. <laughs> so it's going to be a big, a big struggle. But if I can just win a game and just get the love for the, for the game of yeah. nine ball, meet new people, meet different people um, and just try and benefit both sports and yeah. it's a win-win for me. Well, it's certainly caught everybody's imagination. You know, everybody's yeah. talking about it and, you know, I, I think it's, it's great fun, you know, being a Q Sport fan myself and selling the kit for so many years, you know, I think it's just really exciting for you to be going out there and giving it a crack and, and, and having the attitude which you've... <sighs> ooh, Let's finish which it off start, then. We finish it, the finish it earlier. So I'll try and put him off actually, I'll stand right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's nailed oh, it. We're off. Do you want another one? One more. One more? One more. Oh. Do you want to do one another more one? If you want. Yeah? Don't want. Go on then, let's have one more. Because that was over quite quick, wasn't it guys? So do you know you still going, John? So do you do you know any of the American no. players? Not, not really. It's your break now, I think. Um, no, it, it, I've not really ever, ever spoke to anyone. Um, and I think Chris, Chris Mellon, I know, played quite a lot of snooker, so yeah. I've spoken you know to him Chris? a few times. Yeah. Not, not personally. No, um, right. I've spoken to him a few times at the tournaments, and he, he seemed really nice. And, and, um, and Coral's obviously... Been, been nice to me, tried to give me some advice and he's offered to to come down and, and give, give me some help. So, I mean, they're kind of the only only people that, that I know. Um, and any bit of help from Coral tomorrow could, could yeah. go a long way. So, hopefully if I get a few rounds under my belt over there, I could be dedicating my success to him. <laughs> yeah. Well, he knows what he's doing. I mean, he's he's done extremely well. He, he, really, he went in the US Open good back, I think. Yeah. Well, champ. Oh, that's a Moscone Cup. Do you have you watched your pool, American pool watcher? Have you uh, watched? I've seen it a few times. I've seen the Moscone Cup, and it just seems to be getting bigger and bigger. I think mm. from from what I've heard, the crowds were were never that big for pool. There was a sort of a few hundred people for the Moscone Cup, and they've built it up to I think it's two and a half thousand this mm. year. Yeah. Um, so it is a sport that seems to be on the up, and it's probably a good time for me to try and get involved. Yeah. In before it's too late. Let's get this nine ball in then. Oh. Hang on. Oh. No. 
Go on, Ben, we'll see you do it. Just going to go down the rail. 